Hey teachers, Rachel Parlett here from the Classroom Nook, and in this workshop we are going to talk about how you can use the Google Calendar, a free tool, to plan and organize everything in your teacher life. So you're in the right place if you need to keep track of staff or grade level meetings, you have parent-teacher conferences, you plan for or attend CSE meetings or RTI meetings, you have state testing, you take your students on field trips, you host open houses, you have reading and writing conferences that you do with your students, you make weekly copies for your class, you do any kind of curriculum planning, or you co-teach or job share, and many, many more things. So you're in the right place if any of these things ring true for you. I wanna share with you how the Google Calendar can help you plan and organize everything in one place. So no more random post-it notes or notebooks with ideas and things like that. You're gonna have everything that you need and organize in one place, and it's the Google Calendar. And again, like I mentioned, it's a free tool, and all you need to get started is a free Google account, which most of us already have, and our students also have them as well. As an option, you can also download the Google Calendar app on your phone, and this will help you to see any of the things that you put onto your Google Calendar on the go on any mobile, de mobile device that you have. So that's an option, but I highly recommend it. So in this training, you're going to learn how to locate your Google Calendar, how to create different categories on your calendar and color code them so that you know exactly what each event and task on your calendar means. You're gonna learn how to create task lists so that you can check them off and make sure that you've got everything that you need done. You're gonna learn how to share your calendar with a coworker, which is great if you do job share or if you work closely with your grade level team. And I'm gonna share with you some ideas of what you should be putting on your calendar to kind of help you stay organized. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I am inside of a web browser. Um, I'm, I'm on Google Chrome, but you can access it from any web browser. And I'm gonna show you first where you can locate your Google Calendar. So right here, I'm just, I'm already signed into my Google account and I'm opened in a fresh tab. And all I need to do is go over here to this nine square. And if I click on it, I have all of these options, but the one we're looking for is the Google Calendar app and simply click on it and it will bring up your Google Calendar. Now, if you have never used the Google Calendar before, it's going to be blank like you see here, and you'll also see some default calendars that they've created for you. Um, it'll probably say your name just as a default or whatever your username is for Google in general, and then it'll create a tasks. Now, sometimes this says reminders, and if that's the case, and you do want tasks, which you most likely will for our purposes, if you just click on these three little dots, It'll say switch to tasks. So if it's set at reminders and you click on this, you can switch to tasks. And I'll show you why you, want, why you might want to do that later on. But this overall right here is your Google calendars that are already made for you. And I'm going to show you how you create new calendars. And by calendars, I simply mean categories. So each calendar on your main Google calendar layout is going to stand for a specific category, like curriculum planning or parent com communications, things like that. And we'll talk more about that as we go out. But I wanna go ahead and just go over the layout of the Google Calendar with you first. So over here you have um, how you can view the calendar. So right now it's set at the monthly view. If you come to that drop down menu, you can view just the day that you're on. So right now you'll see just Wednesday, January 31st, which is when I'm recording this. If you wanna view the whole week, It'll just show you um, the week there, which actually right now it's marked with showing um, to not show weekends. So if you are just using this for your school life, this might be a great option for you because it just shows Monday through Friday. If you do wanna see the weekends, you can just click on show weekends and it'll add in Saturday and Sunday for you. You can also view it like the month like we saw, or you can even view out the whole year if you need a quick reference to when something, um, where something lands in the calendar year. But let's go ahead and just check out month and keep it at that. Over here, like I mentioned, are your calendars that you are gonna create or your categories. I'm gonna use those words kind of interchangeably. Cal categories, also calendars, same thing. You can turn any calendar off. So for example, right now we don't have anything on the calendar, so you don't see anything. But if I had a whole bunch of stuff, actually I'll show you my husband and my calendar. If I click on our calendar, a whole bunch of stuff pops up, our 
menus for the week, things going on in our own personal life. But if I click on that, it takes it all off, which makes it nice if you just want to focus on one particular category or one particular calendar. There are two types of things that you put on the Google Calendar. The first thing is an event, and the second thing is a task. Now, events are things that are going on in your classroom, things like units that you're teaching, meetings that you have, conferences that you need to attend, things like that, field trips, and so on. Tasks are those things that you would you know, normally create a list for, things like make copies, make a phone call, stuff like that. Those are going to be your tasks and classroom events, classroom happenings, those are going to be your events. So the first thing I want to do with you is create the different calendars that you may create. I'm just going to do some sample calendars. You can definitely make this your own and make any category that fits the needs of your classroom. So to create a calendar or a category interchangeably, you're going to go up here and press the plus sign and you're going to click on new calendar. You can go ahead and give your calendar a name. So if I'm thinking about how I would like a category or a calendar for all of the subjects that I teach, I'm going to go ahead and create a calendar called math and I click on create calendar. Then I can go ahead and add social studies and click on create calendar. And you'll notice that as I'm creating these calendars, they're popping up on the side here, adding to the calendars that were already there. I'm going to go ahead and add, um, let's see, reading and so on. So you could go ahead and create a calendar for every subject that you teach. If you just teach one subject, you might divide it by the different classes that you teach. If you teach um, ELA to all the sixth graders, you might um, put in period one, period two, period three, however you want to divide that up. Then I also might have a calendar for my parent communications, and I'm going to show you how you use these calendars in a minute. So we'll go ahead and do parent communications. You might create a calendar for school meetings, a calendar for school events, things like assemblies or field trips, and then student conferences. And finally, I'll add in state testing so that you can make sure you know exactly when that is going to be showing up in your calendar. So again, these are just some examples. You can certainly create any calendars that would make sense for how your classroom and how your teaching schedule is set up. So once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click back and I see all of my calendars here. Now notice all of them were assigned a color. If you want to go, if you like the color that they gave you, go ahead and keep it. But if you want to go in and add your own color, go ahead and do that. You can simply do it by clicking on the three buttons there that you see and choosing whatever color you want. Math, let's go ahead and change it to green. Parent communications, let's go ahead and make it purple. And I'm just going to go down and just randomly assign these colors. Okay, so once I've, I've got my colors the, say, the way I want them to be, I'm all set to start adding different events and tasks to my calendar. So to add an event onto my calendar, so an event again means anything happening in my classroom, I can click on any box that I want that event to happen to start on. So let's say I'm going to begin a reading unit on nonfiction text features on February 5th. I'm going to go ahead and click on February 5th. I'm going to make sure that the event um, circle here or oval is highlighted, not task, because that's going to be something different. I want to make sure that the event is in blue, and then I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this my nonfiction text features. And so it starts on the 5th, but it's going to go longer than February 5th, just one day. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that second date and give it an end date. So let's go ahead and say February 23rd. Now notice as I do that, it go ahead, goes ahead and adds it to the calendar. But I don't want it in my Rachel Parlette calendar. I want it as my reading calendar. So if I click on reading, it's going to give it that red color so that it stands out as a reading event in my classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And this is where it might be helpful to just view Monday through Friday because as you can see, when I put an event that lasts more than several days, it goes over the weekend. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it to um, show to not show weekends and then it makes more sense that for three weeks, Monday through Friday, I'm going to be working on nonfiction text features. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in a few more events here. 
Let's say that at the same time that I'm teaching nonfiction text features, I'm also going to be teaching nonfiction writing during my writer's block. So I'll go ahead and click on the fifth because I'll hopefully the stars will align perfectly and I will be teaching these things at the same time and I'll put in nonfiction writing. So I want to make sure I put it February 5th as my start date. I'll make it a three week unit and I will choose writing as my calendar and I'm going to click on save. So now I can see that these both are going on at the same time and it's really easy to see what is all going on in my classroom on a day-to-day -day basis. Now let's say I want to add a, an event that is a specific time, say a parent conference or a, a student conference that I'm having during the day in my classroom. I can do that in the same way, but I'm going to actually add a time to it. So let's say on Monday on the 5th, I have a parent conference with Joey's parents or however you want to put that. It's an event and it's going to happen on the 5th and it's going to end on the 5th and now notice over here it says add time. If I click on time I can give a specific time. Let's say they're going to come right after school at 4 p.m. and it's going to be an hour, or an hour conference or it could be 30 minutes however you want to do it. I'm going to leave it at an hour and I'm going to make sure that I change the calendar to parent communication. And when I click on save, instead of it use or instead of it putting a block across the whole day, it just puts a dot because that's just a portion of my day and it's a, it has a specific time. So that's really nice that you can see when things are happening when they have specific times. Another event that you might be putting in your calendar that has a specific time are your grade level meetings. So let's say every Friday afternoon at 4.30 you meet with your grade level team and you plan for the fall, for the next week. So I'm going to click on Fridays and I'm going to click on or add the title of team meeting and it's an event. It's going to happen on February 9th and I'm going to go ahead and add a time at 4.30 or yeah 4.30 and I'm going to put school meetings. Now here's the thing. If you meet every single Friday at 4.30 or whatever the day is, you don't want to have to go in and add this every single Friday. So if there's a reoccurring event, you can easily have it automatically reoccur on your calendar with just one other extra setting. So I'm going to click on more options and here up at the top, you can either click all day, which it's not going to happen all day, or you can click on the does not repeat and change it to weekly on Friday or maybe you meet the, the second Friday or of every month however you have it you can go ahead and choose how often you want that particular event to reoccur on your calendar so let's just go ahead and say weekly on Friday and I'm gonna go ahead and press save and you'll see that it goes ahead and adds it every Friday until you tell it to stop now if you wanted to tell it to stop you could go up here click on the edit and where it says weekly on Friday, you can go to custom and then tell it when to end. So you can say right now it's set to ne never end. You can have it end on a certain day or after, you know, five or six occurrences, however you want to do that. So you can really customize it to fit exactly what you need. But I'm going to go ahead and set, press save and we're good to go. So I could continue to go on and add as many events and units and anything else that you see over here in my calendar. I could go ahead and fill this calendar up. I could go ahead several months, however far out I want to go. Then I can always pop back to the current day that I'm on and I can just really fill this calendar up and be super prepared. But you get the idea. So right now I want to go ahead and talk about one other thing that you do on your calendar, which is to add tasks. So we see over here you have your task calendar and if I want to make a, uh, a note to myself of a specific task that I need to complete then I'm gonna go ahead and again click on the day that I'm gonna create that task and this time I want to make sure that task is highlighted. So I'm gonna go ahead and write make copies for multiplication homework and you can add a description in here if you want to make a little note to yourself, maybe how many copies you need to make or what color to copy it on. However you want to do that, you could add or just leave it blank. It's up to you. And then you're going to click on save. Now let's say you have a task on your calendar that you didn't get to that day. You can simply just drag it to the next day and it'll keep it for you. And it's really easy to rearrange the things on your calendar. Same goes true for any event 
that you have on your calendar, like your reading unit or your writing unit or a parent-teacher conference, you can easily just click on that bar and drag it to the next day or even down a whole week and it moves the whole time with you as well. So you keep that three-week block alongside um, even if you move it around. One last thing I want to share with you is if you teach with a co-teacher or you work closely with your grade level team, you may want to have the option to share your calendar with one or more teachers. And to do that, you're simply going to go over here to where you see the three little dots next to any of the calendars that you'd like to share. So let's get, say that you want to share your reading calendar with another teacher. You're going to go ahead and click those three dots, come over to settings and sharing, and it'll open for you a new window and right down here where it says share with specific people you're going to add that person's email list right here and send it to them and then what will happen is that person will get a notification about um, joining this particular ca calendar and they'll have access to the calendar as well so then anything that they do on the calendar will show up on yours it'll all sync together so that was really helpful if you want to share a calendar you'll need to do that for every single calendar that you'd like to share um, to make it visible by other teachers so there you have it your step-by-step -step plan on how to use the Google Calendar for curriculum planning and teacher organization. I hope you found this helpful and that you will start using the Google Calendar to make your teacher life way more organized.